Look, I have uh, two glasses of wine almost every night. I love red meat. I have it at least once a day. And if working so hard now means I don't have a relationship, I'm not enjoying my life, I'm ruining my health, what good is that? And then a lot of people are watching all these influencers. We got to go in 10x and we got to max out. And that's kind of like my mentality to be brave and all that stuff. So something's no. wrong with, with yeah. the way I'm kind of running my life. If you don't focus on health, then you can't focus on the health of your business. Yeah. Then you changed my life today. So I'm here with uh, Mark Sisson, and uh, it's a dream come true. Mark, thank you for being on this podcast, by the way. Uh, I just, I, I was literally in a pool and jumped out, uh, speeded over here with my family, and, and uh, just really excited because um, a little history about myself. I told you behind the camera, but I started this whole keto, and I don't even know if I'm doing it right. I'm like 80% keto yeah. and 20% cheat meals. So what I do is 80% of the time I eat healthy, I do keto, and then 20% I just break it. I eat hamburgers, pizza. Uh, beers in the morning and just kind of like my, in the morning yeah so all right i wake up really early like <laughs> 3 a.m yeah every, every day yeah and then my cheat day i just i like beer i like peroni yeah, yeah. so i drink peroni and in the mornings and sometimes it's like 5 a.m and i'm having a peroni and it's kind of weird but i wake up so early that it's my cheat meal and i want to yeah, have that no, i get it yeah. but i don't know if i'm doing that right but 10 years ago this girl from 24-hour fitness she introduced me to this diet and she said you got to follow mark sison and i'm like doesn't make sense. Like I work my ass off. Like I work out six times a week and I eat uh, carbs and, and then I do a lot of cardio thinking I need carbs for cardio. And right. then she told me, hey, tone it down a notch. Do more, do more weights. You don't even have to do that much cardio. And she didn't do cardio because she hurt her knee, but she was shredded and she was 44 years old. And I'm like, back then I'm, I'm 27 years old. And I'm yeah. like, how the hell am I not like yeah. in better shape? Yeah. And, and it doesn't make sense. I'm doing an hour and a half of cardio every day sometimes to make sure I get that six pack and I'm getting skinnier and just like skinny fat. Yep. But but um, I don't know if I, if I was doing that right, but just want to thank you for for introducing this diet and changing my life. But um, can you tell me if, if that was the right way or what was my mistake? Well, I mean, look, there's there's no right or wrong way to do any of this. This yeah. is this is um, about making choices in your life that work with your lifestyle work with your business style, uh, with your family arrangement. So what I do is I coach people on how to uh, make choices that work in the context of all of that. Yeah. Um, starting with, uh, you know, eating, eating better food and getting your body to become metabolically flexible. That's really my thing is I, I want people to be able to get energy from whatever source of calories is on their body, whether it's the body fat on mm -hmm. them stored or whether it's a fat on their plate of food or carbohydrates on their plate of food or glyco glycogen in their muscles or glucose in their muscles or ketones that their liver makes. We have all these energy substrates within our body that we could tap into yeah. if we had the right machinery. But the problem is most people don't spend the time to build the metabolic machinery. And what you were doing was you were sort of focused on the carbohydrate glucose yeah. part of that equation, but not on the fat burning part of that equation. Mm -hmm. So... In one sense, you were doing it right for the amount of work that you were doing, right? If yeah. you're working out an hour and a half a day doing, you know, cardio, yeah. you need all the carbs. Um, on the other hand, why are you doing all that cardio if you're trying to, to you know, lose body fat and, and, and get a toned uh, physique and have more energy and be more productive at work, then you're better off teaching your body how to burn fat and not be so reliant on the carbohydrate. Yeah. So, you know, I spend a lot of time, a lot of books, a lot of uh, seminars on showing people how this works yeah. physiologically. But the idea is to develop this metabolic flexibility so that you don't have to think about um, what you're eating all the time. It's intuitive. You don't have to eat every three or four hours to maintain muscle mass. You can go long periods of time without eating anything if you want, if you're by design, you're the day of, you know, your, your schedule for the day. Yeah. So... So the question is, are you doing keto right or wrong? You know, you're doing you perfectly. You're yeah. doing, you look great. I'm sure you have all the energy you need to get you through all these businesses that you run. Um, at, at the end of the day, that's what I want for people is I want you to feel good yeah, yeah. and be productive 
and love what you do and, and you know, uh, enjoy every possible moment. So in, in other words, you eliminate the carbs and you get all your energy from fats, right? And, and like when, that, when I say that, because for people that are watching that are not experts in this, in this field, like what kind of fats? It doesn't mean like you could go out there and get fried food. There's certain oils and certain things that are sure. good for you, right? Sure. So, you know, when you, you mentioned the term keto, keto is one way of developing this metabolic flexibility. It's not the only way. Uh, it's one way. It's probably the most efficient way and, and in my mind, the best way. But it also doesn't necessarily require that you stay keto all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you do the work, if you build this metabolic machinery by using a low carb ketogenic technique, then you can get to the point where you're metabolically flexible and then you can have a beer in the morning. You can have uh, a piece of pizza once in a while and not get derailed and not get thrown off your plan. But at the, the, really the essence of, of keto eating is to cut carbs back so that your body goes, hmm, I'm not going to be getting all my energy from carbohydrates, from, from breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and all this other stuff throughout the day anymore. I better learn how to burn off my stored body fat. And so you create this metabolic machinery to take fat out of storage and, and actually combust it in the muscles yeah. as fuel. Uh, and it's a it's a very elegant way of deriving energy all day long, and it it curtails your appetite, so you're no longer driven by by um, you know uh, hunger and appetite and cravings and meal times. And then um, ultimately, you have uh, you, you know your your carb intake goes down. Now, to your point, what kind of fats you know are are yeah. allowed, if you will, in mm -hmm. this? And so you want to get rid of corn oil, canola oil, soybean oil, and you find these in all the processed foods. So it, they're kind of insidious and found throughout all the processed foods. The good fats, butter, lard, uh, ghee, coconut oil, avocado oil, there's a list, right? There's a, and you sort of have to know what the list yeah. is in order to avoid the bad ones and, and consume the good ones. But there are such a thing as good fats that are good for you, that are beneficial that help you become more ketogenic and help you lose actual stored body fat. Would 80-20 work? Like 80% keto and 20% cheat? So <clears throat> I've been doing that I, for and, 10 and, years. Yeah. Well, and, well, all right. So, so again, it works for you. But, 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 but uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm not at your level. Like I'm not like shredded. Uh, I, I get that four pack. I'm always fighting in between the four pack and the six pack. Yeah. And, and uh, I noticed that when, when I stop drinking alcohol, because I, I love liquor, and, and I love wines and and when I and champagne. Champagne's really bad for you, I, I yeah. think. So when I when I cut the alcohol, I eat healthy. Yeah. And and by healthy, I mean I'm keto a hundred percent. Because when I don't drink, I don't have cravings. So when I don't drink, I'm all healthy fats and healthy protein, fish, chicken, meats, and 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 I notice that that I I, I get rid of all the puffiness and I get a six pack. And yeah. Then, like is it's there weird. A is there a question there? It sounds like you know what to do. Yeah. Uh, not seriously, right? So when you don't drink and you, because alcohol, which I'm not down on alcohol, I have wine almost every night, but I get a special kind of wine. I get a low sugar, lower alcohol wine. It's a paleo wines, actually. You're making me happy now. Now, I know. It's no, and it, look, it was life changing when I found this because I went a year or two without drinking alcohol because I recognized that it was interfering with my, you know, my keto efforts. Yeah. But once I found this particular type of strategy, I was able to incorporate it back in. I mean, that's the beauty of what I do is I try to, I try to make my life uh, full and enjoyable. I'm not about like, oh, you can't do this and don't do that and exclude that and keep that out of your diet. I'm about finding things that I can include, I can, yeah. how I can be as inclusive as possible. Because as I said, at the end of the day, this is about enjoying life. Like the reason you work hard is so, to enjoy life. Yeah. The reason you, know, you, you work out and stay healthy is to enjoy life, right? You're, you're, if you're in pain, if you're overweight, if you don't have energy, you're gonna be miserable. You're not gonna yeah. be enjoying life. So the reason we do all these things is, is to have a better life. And part of a better life for me is to enjoy every single bite of food I put in my mouth, right? And to have a little bit of alcohol once in a while and to have an indulgence every once in a while. I don't like to call it a cheat meal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I suppose you, could, you, can, you can do that. I just sort of allow certain types of foods yeah. every once in a while that I otherwise wouldn't include in my normal diet. I'm like, and, geez, I'm And how come people don't know about this? Because some people, maybe the people that are, that are against this diet, 
they're like, no, eating meat every day is bad and too much fat, cholesterol, heart attacks. And they're talking about all, all this. I know because I've been doing it for 10 years yeah. and I, I just kind of cheat a little bit, like 80, 20. Yeah. But we make something. My wife makes this incredible fried chicken. So maybe tell me if this is right. But we get a chicken. Yeah. We we use coconut uh, oil. Yeah. Uh, the butter yeah. and we fry the chicken with that oil. Right. Is that is that healthy? What's the what kind of breading, if any? We use uh, almond uh, flour. Almond flour, and, yeah, it's and, great. And or coconut flour. No, that's a good hack. That's a good fried chicken hack. Yeah, right? and it tastes so yeah. good though. Yeah. It tastes, oh, it tastes sure, no, the coconut. I'm sure it's, fresh. Like it yeah. tastes way better than the chicken nuggets. Yeah. No, that's great. So, so yeah, but you're saying that you you have like a drink. This is really interesting uh, for people watching this. Imagine having a, a drink a day. Like you you said that you have a drink a day, like wine, some wine yeah, that's good. Some wine, yeah. And and do you, is is that true? Like yeah. Like how many do you have? Like because when I have one one uh, one glass, one I, I want the second one. Three and and then seven, she's like, 17. oh, let's have yeah, last yeah, one. No, 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 no. And then sometimes one, yeah. that leads to like seven yeah. or eight glasses. But yeah. it, obviously, it's not every day, or else I I, I would be like yeah. Fat Albert instead of. But. No, I mean I'm, I look. I have uh, two glasses of wine almost every night with with dinner, and they're uh, again they're they're specially selected wines that are. Uh, like 12% alcohol. They have zero sugar. You know, most wines in the U.S. have, some wines have as much sugar as Coca-Cola. Wow. Yeah, and that'll completely throw you off. So, and that's the sugar that that, that it causes you to feel like crap the next morning, plus the fact that it's the way the the, the skins of the grapes are over, yeah, yeah. over macerated to give it the really rich, rich, dark red um, uh, color that the U.S. market prefers, but that's where the tannins are, yeah. the, the histamines. Is that why sometimes I, I drink certain wine and I feel amazing in the morning? Sometimes yeah. I feel like complete I'm, shit. Probably, probably. That's uh, There's a lot to be said for that. I mean, um, that's why these these I, I, do, I drink these wines and I know my, my limit, right? So I don't, I cut it off at two glasses. Sometimes yeah. it's one glass, sometimes it's two. It's almost never three. It's just, um, you know, I... I I know the fringe. I know where to. I know where the edges are. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I I play just up to the edge in in my lifestyle. Like I know what I can get away with and how much bread I can eat. Like like I'm a big anti grain guy, right? I'm an anti wheat guy. But but if somebody's you know somebody's just made this fantastic loaf of bread, I'm not going to not have two bites or three bites. Yeah. With a whole lot of butter. Um, but to your, you know, you, you ask and, about, you know, and fats and are fats bad? No, fats are in the in the right context. Yeah, fats yeah. Are, are are great. Because a little piece of bread, you it takes takes care of your craving, but then all the butter fills you up, right? Yeah. And you don't get hungry. It keeps yeah. you like solid for. No, hours. there's tricks. There's, there's there's little methods to you know how you do this. Now, you know, if I ate 17 pieces of bread, I'd be I'd pay for it the next day. Yeah. But one or two. Uh, that's that fringe I'm talking about. That's like understanding through years of developing my own metabolic flexibility and my metabolic efficiency, you know, intuitively knowing what I can get away with, what I should stay away from, and 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 what I could try without, you know, any negative impacts in the short term. Yeah, and I, we got to get that wine. I know my, my wife was really yeah. excited right now. She was like smiling. Yeah. But that, that wine, do you, did you create it or can no, you no, share it? No, no, no. I have a, it's a, a friend of mine. Uh, finds them around the world. The company's called Dry Farm Wines, and they send you, you know, you, you tell them you like whites, you like reds, you like rosés, and they they find wines around the world, which they curate. Uh, they test them for alcohol content, for um, additives, so they're not allowed to have any additives of the 76 approved additives that the U.S. Department of Agriculture will let you put in wine without disclosing it. Yeah. Um, and no sugar. And so then they send them to your house, you know, and, on whatever schedule and, and you And they're want. in stock right now? Oh my God! Yeah. Well, there's like it's like hundreds of different kinds of wines. He, throughout all throughout, he he sources them all throughout Europe and South America. Yeah. And these are existing vineyards that have been around for hundreds of years. In some cases, they just don't grow grapes and and mess them up the way most wineries in the U.S. do. Can you talk about that? I I I heard they put like extra sweet sweetener or sugar in the oh, normal the wine. Oh, the stuff they do to, to wines in the U.S. is what it's it's horrible. I mean. You know, and, and some of the you know most well respected, big, fat, thick, rich, chocolatey, leathery, oaky California yeah. cabs, you know, have like I say, as much sugar as Coca Cola. Um, they've got all sorts of weird additives that they don't even have to tell you about on the label, yeah. but the uh, Department of Agriculture allows. Wow. A lot of them are are um, they're fermented in uh, a yeast concoction that is made by by the laboratory as opposed to just wines being fermented in their own native yeast that's already on the skin. So a lot of times you'll go to a, a vineyard 
uh, winery in the U.S. and every year it'll taste the same from one year to the next, even though they bought their grapes from different from different grape growers because they use they use the same yeast preparation every year. Whereas some of these um, these sort of dry farmed wines, uh, the the grapes change from one year to the next depending on how much rain fell that year. They don't irrigate them, uh, depending on you know the soil uh, content mm-hmm. uh, and and depending on the yeast that's on the grapes when they pick them. So one one year to the next, they might change taste dramatically. Yeah. And a lot of people, I'm sure they don't know about this because I've seen some like I've seen like this girl and right. And she drinks wine all the time. Yeah. I'm always seeing her drink wine. Yeah. And she's like completely like in top notch shape. Yeah. And then I see this other like all these other girls, uh, not because not wine and girls, I'm not telling, but I, I see these people that drink wine. Yeah. So men and girls. Yeah. And, and they're just they're kind of fat. And, and, and yeah, so I mean, look, it's uh, w- alcohol does, um, in, you know, diminish your inhibitions, and it's it tends to make people a little bit more uh, willing to take that second piece of pie or that you know third helping of mashed yeah. potatoes, right? That's it, it lowers your inhibitions in that regard. So I- I- any amount of alcohol does tend to do that. So you still have to kind of realize that. Uh, this is my wine and this is what I'm drinking and uh, this is my meal and this is yeah. what I'm eating and I don't want to let the wine, you know, sort of overpower my, you know, my sense of what a complete meal is. So a lot of times people will will say that not just the calories and the sugar, primarily in, in wines that are typically U.S. grown, but also the alcohol will, will sort of um, open the door to consuming more calories at any one meal. So yeah. You're going to have to watch that. And I don't want to spend too much time on alcohol, but, but a, a few more things that I just wanted to add. So this, this wine, they have it in all flavors. They have like Cabernet. Oh my God. It's, you know, Pinots and Cabs and, and Burgundies and white, red Burgundies. And no, it's, and I, I mean, I don't want this to sound like an ad for dry farm wines, but <laughs> these guys are my friends. They've, they've created a, an incredible business. Um, I was one of their first influencers, um, I do get uh, free wine for compensation for, you know, but I'm, I'm just saying uh, I look for things throughout my life that um, that are going to add benefit to my life. And this was one of those things where I literally went a year without drinking wine because I thought that's the end of it. I can't I can't be paleo. I can't be primal. I can't be keto and drink wine because it just doesn't work. And yeah. then there was a solution for that. There was an answer for that. Wow. So, I'm, yeah. I'm going to get some, some yeah, cases yeah. of this <laughs> wine. OK, but uh, when you. Like when you drink that wine, for example, is that healthier or or maybe it's not healthier? It's just it's just the best it's, option. It's right? less unhealthy. But it's, it's literally the way I would say it. Right. <laughs> I mean, look, I would never recommend anyone drink alcohol because alcohol is ethanol. Ethanol is toxic to the human body. So, you know, we know that even though it's it's bizarre because I'm, I'm you know, I'm looking for all the studies that show that that alcohol and wine is bad for you. And every study that comes out says it. You know, two yeah. glasses of wine is is better for you than no glasses of wine every day. Yeah, I mean, they say wine is healthy. Like, yeah, they, they... no. So, you know, I'm not going to recommend that people drink wine. There are obviously issues with people who have uh, problems with alcohol and so on. However, if you're going to choose to drink um, alcohol, there are some there are some choices. You know, there's some low carb, uh, better for you yeah. choices. I'm not going to say wine is healthy, but I'm going to say better for you choices. Yeah, because because yeah. wine has this ingredient that's supposedly healthy for you right but well what resveratrol is the is yeah. the ingredient that you would think but th- it may be just the just the alcohol and wine you know is acts as a blood thinner and people have fewer uh you know heart attacks i don't know i mean the studies are like i keep looking for one that says wine's bad for you and yeah. i can't find them so. yeah 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 and yeah. this and this is is this a better option than like tequila on the rocks yeah so uh good question i mean tequila of, of all of the um the hard liquors tequila is probably Again, the least offensive. It doesn't mm-hmm. have any sugar in it, and uh, if it's if it's a pure tequila, and um, you know, on the rocks with water, you know, if you're if you're going to go down that route, um, how did we get here, Albert? I'm I'm like I'm. How do we get to alcohol when <laughs> trying to tell people to teach people to be healthy? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it, but if they're going to go for it, yeah, I I just think it alcohol is a big thing that makes people happy. Like when I started my driven event, yeah, um, I wanted to make it different from all the other seminars. Like people have seminars, and people usually get there. And then people can't wait to leave the seminar to go and mix the mixers. Yeah. And then everybody pounds drinks, is hung over the next day. So I said, well, driven event, people, yeah. people, especially Amer- I think the world, not, not only, yeah. only Americans, they love alcohol. Yeah. So I created, I had a bar in, in my driven event and I had, I made it like an event. 
not a conference. Yeah. And people loved it. So people like to feel good. People like to feel happy. When I go uh, 30 days without drinking alcohol, like I reset and I feel great yeah. energy, everything, but I don't feel happy. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't feel 100 percent happy. Yeah. And when I have that, when I know I could when, when I have some drinks, I get happier. Like I enjoy I enjoy it better. Well, that's good. I, so, so let's let's leave leave it at that. Yeah, Just yeah. because I'm supposed to be the guy talking about, you know, yeah, yeah, healthy. So healthy alternatives and 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 that anyway. That's one you know little area that I figured out how to make it work within yeah. the context of being. Yeah, no, that, that that's awesome. Could. So that's going to help me out yeah. a lot, and and also uh, I'll definitely going to get some of that. But yeah, but you're you're 66 years old. 67. 67 years old. Yeah. And and you look like like you like your skin's so nice and and you well I don't know so about that I spend way too much time in the sun so yeah um, but you know physically I feel pretty pretty strong I mean I played uh, three hours of ultimate frisbee yesterday I don't know if you know the game ultimate but it's a pretty fast paced game with and I play with twenty something so you know I can hang I can still hang with uh, with the with and, the, the and, guys and do you think do you think this diet is the main reason why you look like you look and you feel like you feel at 67 years old? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, a diet's 80% of, of what you do. You have to do the work. You have to lift the weights. You have to do some sprinting. You got to you know move around um, for sure. But 80% of your body composition results happen as, as a result of your diet. And that's that whole reconfiguring, establishing metabolic flexibility. Yeah. And at the end of the day, burning off your own stored body fat. So you don't, you have low body fat. And, and for example, People like like me, for example, like I'm very I, I do everything to the extreme. So I'm that type. And, and I know that you're going to not like this, but I, I go hard with the weights. Yeah. And, and I'll do like an hour, like every day I try to do more reps. And then and then I go up and down the stairs here yeah. uh, for uh, it takes me 45 minutes uh, to go up to the 40th floor. Yeah. And then I take the elevator they down the elevator and they down, go because yeah. they close the gym. So yeah. like I, I can't I, I don't like this yeah. whole uh, being apart from people like I like people. Yeah, so they close the gym, the gyms down, and I like the gym. Like it, yeah. it's it's my playground. Like I'm happy, so I'm doing the stairs. But at the same time, since I, since I haven't been so so healthy, I've yeah. been doing killing myself doing every day. I try to let me do a, another flight of stairs and, and just crazy. Yeah. But you're against that. You you work out the the least amount of of time to get the best amount of results. Yeah, so we call it the minimum effective dose. It's something that, uh, it's a term that Tim Ferriss sort of pioneered. Yeah. The minimum effective dose of, uh, of anything, and in this case, exercise. Um, mostly because um, I spent uh, 30 years as an endurance athlete. So I was the guy running marathons all the time. I was the guy doing triathlons and Ironman. Um, I was a guy, you know, spending an hour on the Versa Climber. I mean, that was my thing was endurance sports. But I realized um, way too late, that at no point ever when I was doing this stuff was I ever really having fun. I was just managing discomfort, managing pain. So now I try to find things that are physical, uh, that are fun for me. So that's why when I say I play ultimate, this game, ultimate Frisbee, yeah. um, it's the most fun I have all week. And it is the, it's the biggest ass kicking workout I have all week too. Um, I could barely walk today as I uh, got, you know, got, got off of, uh, got out of bed this morning. It was just, because three hours is a long time to be playing that. Um, I do stand up paddling. I have, a, I have a blast when I'm paddling. In Miami, I'm paddling with manatees and with dolphins. Um, in, in, when I'm in Malibu, I'm with you know, uh, dolphins and whales. Um, I, I, um, you know, I, I do snowboarding. Um, I have an uh, e-foil, electric foil yeah. uh, that, you know, that I ride on the waves. Um, I've got a fat bike that I ride up and down the sand uh, in Miami. I'm always trying to find things that are fun to do and entertaining. And yes, I do spend two sessions a week in the gym, sort of grinding out the stuff that I know I have to do yeah. to stay strong and fit. But the reason I, what I do in the gym is all geared toward avoiding injury when I'm playing. So Got the it. gym stuff isn't like, I'm not into bodybuilding. I'm not, I'm into how can I, how can I um, strengthen and increase my range of motion and mobility so that when I'm playing ultimate or when I'm uh, uh, in the waves, yeah, then I can be, I can perform better and have more fun and enjoy myself and not get hurt. I don't know if I could get uh, Mark to take off his shirt and flex, but I'm going to post some pictures, <laughs> but it, what's, what do you do to, uh, to stay that ripped? Uh, like at at your age, yeah, and and I'm, not only your age, because I'm sure you've been doing this for a, for a lot of years. Yeah. You, you could talk about that, but um, 
like like what how does your workout look like is it like one day's shoulder day chest and biceps day leg day yeah because you work out twice a week yeah. uh, weights, yeah. right yeah um and it's not even twice a week it's once every four days because it takes me that long to recover from wow. from this is one of the things about working out a lot is that when you um if you work out enough to create a change you won't be able to do it two days later or three days later, right? It's gonna take you that long to recover. And as you get older, it takes even longer to recover. So I typically go every four days and I just do a full body routine. So I'll do, uh, I don't separate body parts. I do chest and shoulders, uh, you know, a little bit of mostly shoulders back. Um, I don't really do any ab stuff at all. Uh, I do the paddling that I do, the stand up paddling, for an hour or an hour and a half, once or twice a week. That's what gets the serratus and and the six pack going. Yeah. So I don't even do any ab work. Uh, and and then what you do is if you if you diet right, if yeah. you I don't, I don't want to call it diet, if you eat right, um, your body burns off that layer that of fat. fat and it shows the the eight pack or the twelve pack or the whatever. Wow. <laughs> and 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 like when you do your weight sessions every four yeah. days, like how long are they? Oh. How, 35 minutes, 40 really? minutes. I'm telling you, man, it's like people spend way too much time in the gym and there's a point at which um, it becomes counterproductive to keep going. So um, it's just, you know, your mind is like, well, I'm, I'm at the gym. I got it. It's no good if I don't do an hour. I got to be here an hour. I got to do, you know, three sets of 12 reps on this. And, and, and it's just... You you probably just made me like an extra few million a year be, <laughs> because I, I kill my, I work out six times a week. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of people do this too. Uh, most people do this cause they, they just don't know. And, and maybe, maybe I'm just against, uh, taking it easy. So, so I want to, I just want to kill myself to kind of like feel satisfied. Uh, maybe, maybe that's my fault and everybody's fault, but I, well, let me I, ask you something. Have you ever worked too hard in business? Yeah. Like grunted and strained and gr and, and, and to, don't have anything to show for or less to show for it than if you just worked smart? Yeah. Yeah. So that same principle applies to fitness. Um, you know, most people don't work out at all. So we, you know, we won't talk about them. But those who, who get into working out sometimes get overboard and they start working out too much. Yeah. I mean, certainly as a runner... Um, I trained way too much and I blew myself up and burned myself out. And, and, um, it was, it was, you know, it was a, not a pretty picture. Um, and if I had it back, it's like, you know, I, I, like I trained hundred miles a week for seven years running mm -hmm. and, uh, that was probably 30 miles a week too much for this, this particular body. Did you look as good as you look now or, uh, weighed 30 pounds less, 30 pounds. Oh, so you, you built more muscle. Yeah. I, I weighed 30 pounds less and I had the same body fat. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, you know, I, I have to work to keep, to keep the weight on. In fact, during this whole COVID what, thing, what's I your, lost. your body fat? Oh, so, so here's the thing. It's probably 10%. It's probably always been between eight and 10%. I mean, people think, oh my God, 6% body fat. And that's what they, a lot of people would guess some of the photographs of me at 6%. Nobody's, you know, it's like, you got to really be emaciated to be 6% body fat. Yeah. Um, so, you know, 10, 10 is a good number. Nine, 10 is a good number. A really good number for a guy. 12, 13 is a good number for a and, guy. And 6% body fat isn't healthy, right? No, it's not. It's, it's like when no, people you gotta compete work. and do all that, all that stuff. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that dangerous? That's, I think it's dangerous. Yeah, it's not. First of all, it's not healthy. It's, you know, it works for the, the effort that they're putting in to be on stage and look ripped. But it's not healthy. And, you know, you, you, I mean, you would talk to bodybuilders who would say the closest to death they've ever been was when they walked off stage. Uh, after bet. posing, yeah. and then they could eat again. Wow. But they'd been spent the last, you know, three days and were three weeks, yeah. you know, uh, dieting down and and drinking all sorts of, uh, you know, diuretics and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. they looked good. Because you know, in the mornings, I spend every morning for say, like six days out of the week, I spend an hour and anywhere from an hour to an hour fifteen minutes. But I'm sometimes I get distracted with my phone. But I'll spend like an hour, an hour fifteen minutes weights. But I'll do shoulder shoulders uh, one day, and I'll do chest and biceps the other day. Then I'll do um, legs, and then all the other day I'll do uh, back and triceps. So I have my because that's how I yeah. felt, that's how I was uh, taught on this yeah. how you work out, build every muscle, and after that I go do my forty five minutes of cardio, Jeez, man. going up the stairs. So so you could imagine like I'm wasting like two hours not, plus a day 
working out and I don't have to do that. And then sometimes like, I don't feel like working out. Yeah. I don't feel like, like I wake up at 3 a.m. And yeah. the la last thing I want to do right now is kill myself yeah. for two hours, killing myself with the workout. But you do, right? Yeah. Okay. So why do you do that? Why do you think you do that? I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to have a session now. Right? So why do you think you do that? Why do you think you need to do that for two hours? I feel that I have to do that. To make Look, I'm up, folding my arms and getting yeah. in resistance here. <laughs> <laughs> to, to make up for like the for not eating that healthy and to make up and, and get my six pack back. And then I yeah. do that also because I feel like that makes me tougher. Yeah. That increases my my that gives me a more powerful mindset to go out there and kill it in business. Yeah. So those are the two reasons why I do that. And it gets my blood flow. And I just like to feel that uh, I want to feel like I'm going to like faint because I'm just outputting so much energy and i guess that makes me feel like macho man or something i, I don't know but maybe you know more about no that. so i'm gonna ask you like like you know you just laid it out there about what you do how do you feel about that like do you feel like that's a it, it's efficient been, way of it's been working really good for me yeah. but i only sleep about five to six hours and and um and i do that because i want to wake up early to give me that extra time for the workout yeah and to that and that's usually when i do my so you've, been you've been following jaco Really, right? Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So he, every day he does his watch. It's 4.28 a.m. Oh, I overslept. Sorry. You know? yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, I, yeah, like it's been working for me, like like for the businesses yeah. and everything. And, and uh, I, I really live a great life. Like I have like I have my my family that I take care of. I drive nice, you know, fancy cars and 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 business is, is better than ever. But yeah. I do sometimes feel like I don't want to put myself through all this pain. Like I don't feel like lifting these heavy dumbbells and then going up the stairs and then my knee starts like hurting. Like sometimes I sit down and I feel a bunch of pain right here. That's that's I'm sure from the stairs. Yeah. How old are you? 37. I right. just turned 37. Yeah. So this is where it just starts. It starts right here. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta start to think about like, a, like how, how can I make this sustainable over the yeah. rest of my life? Um, because I was over when I was 37, I was still training hard, even though I had I'd stopped competing 10 years earlier. But in my mind, I said, I'm still that guy who has to train, you know, two hours a day, three hours a day. And um, and then you find out that it's a it's not sustainable. B, it interferes with some part of your life like yeah. that's like if you're doing two hours a day of that and you could be doing if be, be, become very effective in 45 minutes. Who's not getting an hour and 15 of your time? Your family, your kids, your wife, your business, you know, and so if you want to be efficient with this and if, if I'm here, like if my message to you today is you could you could look as good or better than you look now, you could feel as good or better than you feel now, you could get more sleep and it would be more efficient and you could have more time for your family and or your businesses, whatever the priority is for that day. Does that appeal to you? Oh, yeah. OK, now yeah. we're talking. Yeah, but I mean, if, if I'm going to look like you when I'm 67, <laughs> oh, like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start tomorrow. And I think it's a perfect day because we were uh, we were away f uh, with some new friends. Uh, yeah. And uh, we were at the Rosewood, um, Rosewood in uh, by Santa Barbara. Yeah. And it, it was the first time I go there. It's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, these are really successful people. So I'm hanging out with them and, and I couldn't say no. And, and I wanted to make it back over here. So I'm, I feel like my body just had enough yeah. and, and because it's so much pressure and doing things back to back to back and squeezing as much out of every day that I possibly can. Yeah. And then all those workouts that I do like six times out of the week. And, and I do feel like I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to do those type of workouts forever. Like yeah. There's going to be a time where I'm going to bust a knee open or something. Have you ever had an injury? N nothing crazy. No, uh, knock wood. Well, I mean, you know, then you'll find that, uh, you know, that's the forced, like you're, you, you burn the candle at both ends, you're forcing it, you're doing two hour days, six days a week. And then, you know, sometimes you push it a little bit too hard. And that's your body just saying, look, you know, great, you've been doing good so far, but now I got to back it down a little bit, a, yeah. a notch. And what you find over time, and that's part of the, the, the wisdom of age that I've gotten into is that, is that it really is like, I do the least amount I need to do to stay, to stay fit and to look fit. Yeah. Um, look, first thing I realized after I quit competing was it's better to look fit than to be fit. Now, if you look fit, you're fit. OK, so I'm just I'm, I'm sort of joking around with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was so damn fit. I was one of the fittest guys in the world. You know, I was fifth in the U.S. National Championships in Marathon 1980. I finished fourth at Ironman, Hawaii. I set the world record for the Versa Climber. You know that Versa Climber yeah. piece of thing at the gym that it sits in the corner because no one wants to use it because it's too intimidating. I, I, I did the mile climb in that. So, I mean, I, I did all that stuff 
and I don't have anything to show for it. So when I when I when I dial it back and I said, I really want my 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 exercise to be fun now. Point number one. And if I wake up and 4.30 in the morning and I don't feel like going to the gym, nobody, nobody suffers from my not going to the gym that day. And maybe that's my body telling me, you know, I need some time off. Because the beauty of what I've tapped into is, is all of these hidden genetic secrets that we all have, these yeah. genetic switches that we all have. And I've really tapped into the thing about burning fat. And that's all driven by diet. It's none of it is driven by exercising. Yet for 30 years, Everybody thought, I got to run, 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 run. I'm going to burn fat. I got to run, run. I got to ride my bike and run. I got to do cardio. And that's how you burn fat. It turns out that's not how you burn fat. That's how you burn a lot of carbohydrate and get really hungry and eat more carbs so that you can go do it again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And it is literally a treadmill of life that, that you find yourself on. And then, you, as you say, you become skinny fat. Well, who wants, who wants it? You're doing all this work and you're trying to watch every aspect of your life and you're not even getting the results you want. Yeah. Except in your brain, your, your mind's going, I'm a mean guy. I'm a, I'm a mean so, SOB. I can hit the ground. I mean, I mean I've, I'll take that attitude into work. Well, okay, great. You could get that. You can, you can develop that mental ability without putting yourself through that ringer. When you changed from the Mark uh, Sisson that was like the, the super power beast uh, Competitive to, to, athlete, yeah. To the per, to the to the Marxism that studied the science, understands it, and now yeah. you're like, okay, I need 35 minutes every four days of weights, and I'm gonna paddleboard, I'm gonna do all these things. When you when you change that and you went to that other mark yeah. or that new mark, yeah, uh, did you have kind of like a withdrawal syndrome? Oh my god, of, it took five years. Yeah, it took I, five years I for me. I think I'll get depressed if if I just one day I tell still, hey. No more two-hour workouts uh, a day, killing myself. Yeah. Now I'm going to work out 35 minutes every four days, and I'm going to go paddleboard with my friend Mark. Yeah. Like, like how, how's that? How, how can I not have that depression? Well, I mean, look, the depression, you bring it on yourself. It is, um, part of it is, is biochemical because we, we create these endorphins in our brains, these opiate-like uh, chemicals that, 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 <laughs> that the body produces as a result of training too yeah. hard. It's literally a survival mechanism because we train too hard and the body produces these chemicals to sort of keep our brain saying, it's okay, you're not going to die. So it's weird that we want to keep making these chemicals by overtraining ourselves. That, over time, that goes away. The craving, the chasing that high, because yeah. that's what I did for it's five high, years. Yeah. After, I, after I cut my workouts back and after I stopped competing, when I say it took five years, it took five years before I could watch a race on TV or go to a race and go, I could beat that guy. I could yeah. kick his ass. You know, if I, if I, could, I should start training again because I, I still had that competitive part of me, right? Yeah. But who needs that? I mean, so what? I mean, there's always going to be somebody who's going to beat, beat you unless you're the number one in the world. So, you know, if I'm going to go back and, and jeopardize my family life and jeopardize my business success... So I can what win my age group in a in a competitive triathlon? No, I had no more interest in that. So once I got that out of my brain, and, and once I, what I did was I took all that energy that I put into um, competition physically, and I put it into competition mentally. I put it into business. Wow. And I said, all right, I know I can do this. And this is where you're at in your life. You know you can do two hours a day every day in the gym. So okay, you did you you did that. You've yeah. done it. Why do you need to keep doing it when you could take that same amount of energy and put it into this business project or put it into this new seminar or put it into this new uh, program that you're doing? So that I just transferred that energy from, and I'm going to use the term wasting. I wasted it on my own body thinking, what? who am I proving myself to if I beat my time hiking up Ajax in Aspen? Like, who am I... Like, okay, I'm 67. Am I going to set PRs now? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to set any more PRs. Yeah. And at the end of the day, who cares? My wife doesn't care. My kids don't care. My business doesn't care. In fact, all of them are pissed off that I spent that much time on myself when I could have gotten better results in shorter time, and then spent more time with, with the family. Um, the the thing I'm most proud of in business, and I just built a big business and sold it for a lot of money, right? Yeah. The thing I'm most proud of is I spent time with my kids uh, the whole time they were growing up. 
So even when I was training hard, I always let, I, I, I had time for them. Even when I was building a business, I always had time for them because that's really what mattered. You know, it, it isn't the fact that I made a lot of money and then spent no time with my family and then just yeah. gave them the money and bought them stuff, right? Uh, and, and so when we look at a, a well-rounded life, yes, you got to work out. I'm telling you, you have to work out. But no, you don't have to work out as much as you as you as your you know driven brain assumes that you have to work out yeah. to stay on point. A lot of these influencers they tell people to like you got a 10x, you got a 10x, you got to max out, you got to max out. And uh, and 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 like by, by the way, Ed Milet, I don't know if you know him, he's a friend of mine, yeah. Ed Milet, yeah, and he's max out. So we're having this conversation where he's at the gym and and that guy's huge, yeah, he's really good shape, and he's doing uh, some reps. And then he's counting rep number one, two, three, four, five, 12 reps. And then he puts the weights down and then some bigger guy comes and he tells him, why do you do 12 reps? And, and, uh, and it's like, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. I count my reps. And yeah. he's like, you're telling me that if you had, if you could still pull out another rep, a 13th rep, you stop because yeah. your mind yes. already knows 12 reps. And then that's like, yeah. And the other guy tells Ed, well, I stop till I can't. And, and then a lot of people are watching all these influencers and they're like, we got to go in 10x and we got to max out until like, like we can't give anymore. And that's kind of like my mentality to be brave and all that stuff. So, yeah. So, well, you know, so there's different areas of life in which that that may or may not have some impact. But in the gym, for instance. Yeah. Um, a great example. So, you know, Ed's thinking I got to do three sets of 12 of whatever this extra, this particular weight that I know I can do. Well, what if you did, um, you know, two sets of 14 and then stopped? Uh, what if you changed it up? And this was this is this is the whole thing about being more effective and more efficient is that you can you can over time, you can find those areas that um, that that create the change in your muscle that you want. And in fact, I would argue that and I'm not going to suggest that you're not being efficient in your workout but it may be that your body's used to doing what you yeah, do i'm not it's used to it so you just your body says yeah i know how to do that he you know this guy does it every every four days we do up back and biceps and chest and tries and and so your body gets used to it the whole idea behind training is to find that is to mix it up and find that area that your that your body says whoa we haven't done this before yeah let's let's uh upregulate those genetic those uh, genes that turn this particular muscle yeah. on and make it stronger and, and, and more efficient. So it's, it's, you know, it's a metaphor. You, how you work out is sometimes a metaphor for how you do business. Right. And if you plug away, I mean, I, I know I have friends who's like, Oh geez, man, I worked 110 hours last week in my business. And I'm like, well, how much time do you spend with your family? Oh, I could, couldn't see my family. I was too busy working. And you know, I know full well, they weren't working 110 hours. They were, you know, they were at the office, but so, so the same thing can happen in the gym. You can be, um, I was in the gym for two hours today and two hours yesterday and two hours. And I'm going to, and I'm going to look at it and go, well, you know, I can, I can show you how you can be much more efficient in a lot less time and get a lot more done and then get the hell out of there and go on to the next part of your life. Yeah. Well, what you, what you, I see you teaching is how to be more productive and how to enjoy your life yeah. to the fullest. Yeah. Like, I think that's like your great, your message that I, that I like. Yeah. And because if you're, you're telling me like, I'm working out two hours, killing myself to the point where I'm going to get a heart attack and, and I'm 37, you're 67, you're working out for 35 minutes and, and paddle boarding, having fun and having that fancy wine. And you look better, way better than me. Oh God, no, I'm no, like, no, no, please, like, please. Like, something's no. wrong with, with yeah. the way I'm kind of running my life. No, uh, look, I mean, I learned what I learned over 67 years, right? So um, I, I can go back a long ways and say, you know, when I was your age, I didn't have it dialed in. I yeah. mean, I tell my kids, I didn't know what I wanted to do in my life until I was 47. Wow. And then I changed my mind again at 61. So there's plenty of time. That's the, that's the other message is there's plenty of time for, you know, the young entrepreneurs out there yeah. to like figure this stuff out. But what I, what I don't want to have happen is I, I don't want, I don't want you to like get down in a rut and, 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 you know, drive yourself into the ground, yeah. trying to 10X everything. And, and because I'm all about, because I'm about enjoyment of life, I don't subscribe to this, you gotta work harder thing. I think that's, 
that I, and I see, you're right. I see the online coaches, you know. There's a lot of them now. Yeah, it was way, too, way, way too many. Everybody's a coach. And everybody's a coach selling coaching programs. Um, but, uh, you know, you got to, look, there's, there's a point at which you got to take a step back and go, like, what do I want for my life? And, and if working so hard now means I don't have a relationship and um, I'm not enjoying my life and I'm, drag, I'm, I'm ruining my health, which, which does happen, um, what, like, what good is that? I mean, yeah. you know, it's really about, as I say, it's about, it's about enjoying your life. That's the main thing, enjoy your life. And if being productive is a part of enjoying your life because you feel good about what you've created or what you've done for people or humanity or mankind or, you, you know, whatever it is that you've brought your contribution, you know, your special secret sauce that you brought to the world. Yeah. Great. That's, that's very, that's fulfilling. That's, that's about being content and feeling like you've made a contribution. I mean, th these are the things that, you know, that, yeah. that, uh, that make us feel good at the end of the day. Mark, with so much technology right now and all these people out there, why don't they get, why, why doesn't everybody get your message and, and, and learn from you now instead of waiting until they're too, they're old and, and then an injury happens? Like, why do you think these millennials are not like doing it from like a young age? Because um, I'll, I'll tell you something, you changed my life today. Like just having this relationship like face to face. Like I know I, I have my business is all fucked up. I got to go and clean up a lot of things, <laughs> my, starting with my workouts. Yeah. And, and, and it, 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 uh, it's almost like I get pissed off just knowing how you enjoy your life more and look better at 67 than me at 37. <laughs> and I'm killing myself every morning, at, like waking yeah. up at 3 a.m. Yeah. when instead of working harder, uh, I could still work hard. You're not saying don't work hard, but I could work much smarter. Yeah. Like why don't, why don't the young millennials learn faster? You know, it's funny you say that with all the social media and all the technology now, because that's, that seems to be an easy thing to tell other people to do. Yeah. The reason you're not successful is because you're not working hard enough. So you need to work harder. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I, I've, I've known t too many people who made a shitload of money who, who didn't work that hard, but who, who I marvel at about how smart they were and about how they, they rather than spending, you know, um, no, I won't, I won't. I don't mean to take, have you take offense at this, but rather than spend two hours in the gym, yeah. spend 30 minutes in the morning just thinking about the day and planning the day and seeing, all right, this meeting's coming up and what's the best way that I'm going to approach this meeting and get that client to say yes? Or what is the, you know, thinking through rather than driving it home and, and you know, working harder and, and, and grinding it out. Even sleeping an extra hour or two might be more beneficial, right? It would 100% be more beneficial. So... The, you tell me you're getting five or six hours of sleep a night. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, man, that is, that's scary. And you can do that when you're young, but when you get older, um, you know, that's the kind yeah. of stuff that really catches up to you. And, and I think I have to pivot right now for my second part of my life now, uh, or my second third of my life. Yeah. I got to pivot and make a few changes to keep the getting better results, to keep getting better. Um, like go, going back to the to uh, the meat thing, like how how much is is eating uh, red meat uh, gonna kill you? No, there. Look, some of my best friends are are pure carnivores now. They only eat red meat. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm uh, more in the camp of I love red meat. I have it at least once a day. Um, I think it's probably one of the best. Once things. a day, red meat. At least, yeah. And is it at least? And is it uh? Is it like uh? Well, um, uh. Is it like raw or is it well no no done no? Or? It's it's cooked, but it's not overcooked because that's one of you the like a little blood on it. Yeah, and and that's and nothing wrong with that. Nothing like, nothing wrong. Not only is there nothing wrong with this, it, probably again, I, I think meat is still to this day probably the single best thing anyone can eat. Um, and you know I'm like I'm I'm not a fan of of the vegan diet at all. In fact, I I don't see how it's sustainable. Um, I'm not even that big a fan of vegetarian. I think that some of the fake meats they're making now are dangerous. So this whole trend toward plant-based meat is absolutely ludicrous to me. Uh, so I'm 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 a big fan of uh, grass-fed beef. I'm I'm a big fan of the movement to um, toward sustainable regenerative agriculture using ruminant grazing beasts uh, and. 
I'm a, I'm, I like real food. So what separates me from my carnivore friends is yeah. I like food so much that I do like the taste of certain vegetables. So I, I, as I said, I want to be as inclusive as possible. I want to find as many foods that I can include in my diet as possible that would make the, the act of eating a meal that much more pleasurable. Yeah. And what do you have to say to those people that say that, that meat and eating all this stuff could kill you later and it no, causes cancer? No, there's, there's zero. The, the, the more time goes on, there's, the more we know that there's no studies that would indicate that meat causes cancer or that meat causes heart disease or that meat causes uh, any of the, of the issues that have been sort of advertised by the vegan and, and vegetarian community over the past 20 or 30 years yeah. and the medical community in general. Um, more and more studies come out to show that, um, you know, fat and cholesterol are not the proximate cause of heart disease. It's oxidation and inflammation, and it's typically from a diet that's way too high in sugar. Um, and, and when I talk about being too high in sugar, not just sugar, but grains and, and foods that convert to glucose in the bloodstream. I mean, I've written three, three whole books on that subject, yeah. so it's a very complex topic, but I'll just leave it for today to say, look, meat is, meat, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of meat. Yeah, and a lot of people that follow me, they 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 know that I I have this type of diet, and 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 I just wanted to bring the expert, uh, the create. Are you the creator of, of this diet? Is, so what is no, it? No, no, keto no. diet or is it or what do you call it? So, uh, so my original um, research twenty years ago was in the paleo diet, right? And so I liked paleo so much, I created my own brand called Primal, the Primal Blueprint. So my books are the Primal Blueprint, the Primal Connection, Primal Endurance. Uh, and as I, and primal basically means getting rid of all of the unnatural foods and eating primary primal foods. So meat, fish, fowl, eggs, nuts, seeds, vegetables, a little bit of fruit, maybe some starchy tubers, but nothing processed, nothing sugar added. So get rid of the sweetened beverages, the sweetened teas, the sweetened coffees, the sodas, the pies, the cakes, the candies, the, you know, the, the desserts. Get rid of breads, get rid of grains, get rid of crackers. What about fruits? Fruits, and eh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, not a big fan of fruit. My, my right? mom tells me, uh, Al Alberto, she calls me Alberto, you gotta eat, you gotta eat your fruits. And, and, and she tells me, you eat, eat the entire watermelon. It's, it's, it's healthy, it's, uh, it, it's, it's natural, it's a, it's a fruit. And I'm like, yeah. no, I can't eat watermelons, yeah. uh, not too many watermelons, yeah. not too many tomatoes, not bananas. Yeah. And she's like, no, they're healthy, they're healthy. They say it in the news, it's, it's healthy. Yeah, I know. And, and like, like, what do you say to those people that tell you eat a lot of fruits, they're, they're healthy? <laughs> well, if they tell me to eat a lot of fruits, I'm not gonna do it. I know enough about, about the science and, and, and the dietary science to, to suggest that, that you eat too many fruit. Fruit is pure sugar, basically. The fact that it's locked up in some fibrous, you know, matrix for a little while uh, may offset the the um, the issues with it. Certainly, better to eat uh, real fruit than to eat juice that's been, you know, the the, the juice of say seven fruits at once because yeah. that's just a sugar bomb. Um, but I'm telling, I'm trying to get people to avoid sugar. So one way to do that is to is to cut out most fruits. I mean, berries, blueberries, and raspberries. You can eat a handful of those, and they're fine because they're low in sugar. Uh, and they're some of the tart fruits. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, uh, if you're keto, you can eat the healthy fats, adequate proteins, and then pretty much vegetables, green leafy vegetables and, you know, broccoli and Brussels sprouts and salads and things like that without even ever, ever having to count the carbs in them. So, so how, how much is, is too much fruit just for people? I mean, it's not, uh, like, like if you want to, if you want to have, if you want to be, if you want to have a six yeah. pack and, and, and yeah, like I, like I eat fruit once every four days, wow. I eat one serving of fruit once every four days. Like I had, I had a handful of cherries last night and I literally have to say I regretted it uh, a little bit later on because, because it didn't, it didn't mix with the two pound steak that I, that I had for dinner. But you know, I, so I, I, I don't find myself gravitating toward fruit. I know people have you know fruit every day and big uh, bowl of fruit for breakfast in the morning. Look, I'm not gonna argue with that, that choice. That just doesn't work for me. And for most people who are keto, it doesn't work. And for most people who are, well, for all people who are carnivore, it doesn't work. So, um, you know, but these are, these are um, choices. These aren't right or wrong answers to your life. These yeah. aren't black and white, like do this, don't do that. I just know from my research and experience, for me to get the most out of life, I want to burn fat. I want to burn body fat. I want to be lean. 
I want to have the, all the energy I want. I have the muscle mass I need. Um, I want to live the longest possible life. I want to be energetic. I don't want to get sick. Um, and I want to enjoy my life. And, and what works best for me in that regard is a low carb, metabolically flexible, primarily ketogenic way of eating. And, and the, the pros and are there any pros and cons to being a vegetarian or, or like when you compare being just plant-based, uh, vegetable, uh, be, no, no meats versus the meat. Cause I'm sure some people give you some heat, right? Oh, oh he's, he's eating, uh, animals and we're killing animals. No, there's the ethical c concerns there, which is they're, they're not well-founded either because vegetarians don't realize that for every plot of. Of, of vegetables that are grown, thousands of animals are killed. Uh, they're plow, plowing up snakes and frogs and newts and toads and gophers and, and birds nests and things like that so that they can eat their green, you know, their green vegetables. Um, so that's really, that's, that's not an issue. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I mean, I don't have discussions with people necessarily about convincing them to change their way of eating because people defend their choices in eating as aggressively as to defend their religion. Yeah. You know, so I'm not, I, I'm not about to, to try and ch change the mind of a vegetarian. Now, some vegetarians will have eggs and cheese and milk. You know, they're lacto-ovo vegetarian. Some people eat fish and call themselves a vegetarian. Do, do you feel like people that, that, are in the, that eat meats are stronger than people that don't eat any meats? I, I do. Yeah. That you could probably you're like yeah. naturally yours. No, I mean, the, I mean, you know, you you read about vegetarian bodybuilders, but these are people who literally their whole life ate meat and then chose to go vegetarian for a while. But it, now the Internet's full of ex vegetarian bodybuilders, but, you know, guys who were actually vegetarian bodybuilders for a while. And after a couple of years realized this isn't working for me, this and yeah. went back, to, went back to eating meat. Because we're we're meant to hunt animals and yeah. eat animals, right? That's how we started. Like yeah. we, we started. Is, was it 7,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago when the humans millions, came? Millions of years ago. And, uh, you know, at, at first as apes and then as, um, I mean, oh, okay, early yeah. man is 2 million years, you know, was 2 million years ago. 2 million years ago? Yeah. And then and then theoretically most of... Uh, but we were like a present animal, right? Man came, or, no, I mean, we we're, we're still animals. No, we were upright, you know, tool using, tool, tool using hominids. Um, Two million years ago. So, and then 60,000, 70,000 years ago, most of us came out of Africa and, and spread around the world. So, uh, you, you know, we all, we're all connected in that regard. We all go back to uh, some part of sub Saharan Africa with our genetic connection. And we all have these uh, genetic recipes that want us to be hunter gatherers um, and want us to be strong, lean, fit, happy, healthy, productive, loving human beings. Yeah, uh, we've just kind of lost our way with because our brains are so big. We've created a civilization and a way of, you know, building all these buildings and doing all this stuff to make life easier. And our health has become affected yeah. as a result. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm totally sold on on, on your diet. Uh, do, do your books and all that stuff. Does that teach you step by step yes. how to yeah. do everything, what yeah. to eat, everything? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, my, my main book for that is the Keto Reset Diet. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely put the links below for all of that, all that information. But but I, I don't want to end it yet. I, I just have I have I have too much. Uh, you tell me when, when it's when it's OK to <laughs> stop. But go, yeah. there's a lot of bars uh, out there. Uh, I, I happen to like uh, the Quest bars. Yeah. And uh, and and uh, I'm going to meet Tom um, uh, later. I think it's next week. Yeah. But I got these bars because somebody told me uh, and we could just use uh X bar, so so we don't name a bar, but somebody told me you take these bars. They're they're good. They're they're keto. They're they're low carb, and they are healthy for you. It's like it's like a replacement, f uh, and you you'll still stay keto. Is is that true that these bars are no carbs, no sugar? My bars, the the the, the private uh, kitchen bars, or I, I mean I mean the there's no, so many bars on, no, out no, there because no, I want so to talk bars. about your no, bars. No no no. I mean there's no there's a lot of bars out there. Most bars out are there bad? are bad. Yeah. I mean for keto, um, I'm not a big fan of most bars anyway, which is why I made my own, but. Um, most of the bars are fairly high in carbohydrates, fairly high in sugar, um, even contain some, you know, some other, um, unsavory ingredients, shall we say? Um, you know, but there are some keto bars. There are yeah. some bars that would, is, would fit. And, and, um, if you, these bars, their process, is that the reason why they're, they're mad, they're bad and they have a lot of, cause it, it says that they have 20 grams of carbs and yeah. then they put 10 grams of fiber. So yeah. the net, the net is only 10. Is that true? 
Does five? Yeah, minutes? that's some of those. It depends on the bar you're talking about. The company. So, some of them are are working with a type of um, uh, soluble fiber that you have to declare as a carbohydrate, but doesn't have the effect of sugar as a carbohydrate. So it's a little bit of a gray area in labeling laws that that allows the company to say it has you know sort of 20 grams of carb, yes, but 20 of it, or excuse me, 10 of it is is fiber, hence the net carbs is 10. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you're starting to get into that, uh, parsing that the, the label information uh, that way, it's a little, you know, it's you're, you're already on on tricky ground if you're trying to stay keto. What's a better a better thing to take instead of a bar like that, like a, like a full avocado? Lamb like chop. A lamb chop. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. But, you but, know, so, meat, but something that always, you could carry around. No, something like to carry snack. around. Yeah, um, you know, handful of nuts like macadamia nuts are probably always one of the best. Macadamia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, avocados are a little bit messy to carry around and eat on the fly. I guess that's super healthy though, right? Avocados. Yeah, yeah, they're they're fine. I have no, you know, I'm I'm I, I probably buy more, more avocado oil than anyone else in the world for my. Because avocado has uh, it's it's a lot of fat. The do yeah. avocados have sugar? No, no sugar. No, no, and zero carbs. Uh, yeah, zero carbs. There'll be, there'll be one or two grams of, of uh, a fiber type carb. And if you eat an avocado because of all that fat, it'll keep you, uh, it'll satisfy you for a while, right? If you like avocado, yeah. yeah Cause you like, be. you like a coconut. Uh, you, yeah. you, I heard you say uh, that butter. you could take a, a, a spoonful scoop of, of coconut spoonful. butter. Yeah. That's my favorite. That's my go to. That's a snack. That takes the edge off. Yeah. That's a snack. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. If I need it. I mean, you know, over time you get to the point where you don't need snacks anymore. I mean, when you get really metabolically flexible, like I'm talking about, it's like, uh, you know, I had a small lunch today at 1.30 and I'll probably eat at 7.30 tonight or something like that. And those are my two meals. Two meals in one day. Is yeah. that your usual day? Two meals? Yeah. Sometimes one meal. Never three. Wow. Never three meals. Yeah. So you, so you kind of fast in a way. I don't call it fasting if you go more than less than 24 hours without eating. Otherwise, oh. it's just what we call a, a compressed eating window. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then what about your bar? I know you have some bars, yeah. and, and I how how do they make these bars? Like what what oh, it's what a trade what secret man? Well, <laughs> well, what's the um, what's the content of them? Or so we have two bars. One is our collagen bars. So I, I started making uh, collagen bars because I recognized that we need a source of collagen in our diet, and I wasn't getting much um, from from other sources of of, yeah. of food. So I made these collagen bars, and that became our first bar that we introduced. And then last year, we introduced a more of a high-protein bar, low-carb, low high-protein, healthy fats. So we have two bars now. One's more of a protein bar. One's more of a collagen bar. Yeah, I got to get some of those protein bars. So yeah. those, those are approved, obviously, by you. Keto-approved, yeah. Uh, are, are they – there's something that I heard, I heard you talking about the insects. Yeah. Uh, that uh, are they because that's natural, right? Are, yeah. Are, no, no, are, no. I mean, I mean, for most of like uh, crickets are good for most of human history. Uh, humans ate crickets and all all kinds of bugs, all kinds yeah. of insects. Uh, yeah. So I was actually involved, uh, invested in a, in a cricket company for a cricket protein company for uh, a while. They uh, have since ceased to exist, but because um, they couldn't they couldn't get past the ick factor on people. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, look, uh, two billion people around the world eat some form of insects every day. So they can't do, you, do, do you eat insects? No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I have, and I, you know, if I'm in, if I'm in Thailand, I'll eat some insects, right? Yeah. But I don't go out of my way to 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 look for them here in the U.S. Yeah. Now, now going back, I, I went straight into the the whole diet and and, and keto, but. Um, before I forget, your meal that you have in the evenings, is yeah. that is that like a small meal or is it a, a big That's my meal? big meal. That's a big meal. Yeah, so the meal I have for lunch, what you would call lunch at 1.30 is a small meal. And, yeah. and what's a small meal compared to your big um, meal? Maybe a couple of scrambled eggs. Um, I forget what I even had today. I was, oh, I was at, um, had a, I met with my lawyer today. Um, small piece of salmon. And uh, that was it for lunch. And then for your for your late dinner, is, is it a big? I'm thawing out a big steak right now. Albert. Oh wow! I've got a I've got a nice. Uh, Are you already at the point where you're getting hungry or? No, no, no. You I never get hungry. No, I don't. I, I mean, I get hungry. I get ready. I get like, um, what's the word I want to use? I'm, I mean, I'm I'm hungry. I'm not ravenous. Uh, you never get I'm to the point where you where you have to run for food. No, 
Never. Why, why does that happen to people? Because like today we're driving over here and, and still my wife is, you got to stop at In-N-Out. You got to stop at In-N-Out. She's like, I'm starving. <laughs> and she's like acting like if she's going to die, if she doesn't eat in the next yeah. couple of minutes. Like yeah. why does it get to that point for a lot of people? Well, I mean, if you haven't built a metabolic machinery to burn stored body fat all the time, um, you know, you run low on blood sugar. If your brain is used to glucose and you're, and you're running low on blood wow. sugar, then the brain says we're going to stop at In-N-Out, you know, and that's, so that's, this is what I teach. This is what I preach. This is what I, you know, I, all my research is on developing this metabolic flexibility so that that doesn't happen. Because that's impressive how, how you, you had one meal and you have so much energy right now. You're getting all your energy from that store to fat? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, m many days I don't eat, I eat one meal. I, many days I just have dinner every day. Wow. And not because I'm trying to like not eat. Some days it's because I forgot to eat. Oh, crap, 3.30 and I haven't eaten yet. Oh, well, I don't want to eat now because I want to enjoy my dinner. So, you know, I'll do that. Um, most, not most, a lot of my keto friends, including my buddy who owns the Dry Farm Wines, the wine place, yeah, yeah, yeah. one meal a day. He says, I don't have time to sit down and do, I got, you know, I'm, I'm too busy meditating, working out, uh, uh, running my business, uh, being productive. You just made me another couple million right there. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. If I could have one meal a day, that yeah. would save me so much time. Like every two and every two hours, I'm grabbing a snack or I'm getting hungry and I have Steph, my assistant, she's yeah. like, go get me some food, go get me some, order yeah. something because I get hungry yeah. every two hours and a half to the point where I start getting a headache. Yes, you're not um, keto, man. And That's the cheat meals are kill. Uh, the cheat meals are derailing you. You got to get rid of the cheat meals for at least a couple weeks. Yeah. You know, just go full on, full keto. And and I gotta get used to, I gotta get used to it, right? That's why I'm starving every two hours and a half. Yeah. You shouldn't be able to the whole definition of being keto is being able to wake up in the morning and go, Well, I got all the energy I need. I don't need breakfast. And if you could like if you can make it through a morning workout and make it to lunch without any ill effects at all, then you're then you're a fat burning. And, and I do that. Yeah. Like I'll I'll wake up at three. I won't eat sometimes till like ten or eleven AM. But what I do have is my pre-workout, which yeah. is which is uh, Celsius. I, I don't have you ever heard of Celsius? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, is is that a healthy or, or not? I'm not gonna disparage anybody <laughs> else's product. <laughs> but 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 uh, I know you have coffee, right? Yeah. In the mornings, I do have and coffee. And so yeah. I that that's my coffee. So I drink. I have a Celsius. Yeah. I go on with my workout. Yeah. And and I don't get hungry till eleven or ten or or so I'm kind yeah. of doing it in a way. Is, does that qualify or not? Or no, not? it doesn't qualify. No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> So, Maybe. I mean, but but this thing about you you thinking that you got to go two and a half hours after eating and have something else again, that's what? that yeah. has me that has me a little bit concerned, Albert. Yeah. 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 Well, once I, once I get started eating, like I keep I keep yeah. getting hungry. It's, it's weird. Uh, obviously, like I'm kind of like trying to do it. But now I think I'm going to figure it all out by going through all your books. But speaking of, about books. Um, is that how you started, Mark? Like, like how were, I skipped right into the nutrition, but when you started, did you grow up as a, as a rich kid, poor kid? And did you come up with the, like, you came up with this idea of this diet and then people started buying your systems and your products. And then that, that's how oh, you I became just, rich or like, <laughs> so I, I, I definitely grew up a poor kid. I yeah. grew up in a fishing village in Maine. Um, I remember one year in, uh, college, I made more money than my dad did that year. Uh, I made, I painted houses. So I was, I was entrepreneurial as a young Me kid. Too. So, My so, dad was a painter. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, I did, uh, I, I did 40 hours a week mowing lawns as a 12 year old and a 13 year old in the summers. Um, and then, and then, uh, 14, 15, 16, um, I painted houses 40 hours a week in the summer. And then I put myself through school doing that. And so I, I stayed a contractor for a bunch of years because I was during my running career, my, <clears throat> my endurance career. Um, I needed to, make a living because you couldn't make a living running. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, and then, you know, I, I started writing books after I retired from competition. I started writing books on training for competition. And then I started a supplement company about 26 years ago. And I started selling supplements that athletes could use to improve their, their training and perform and, and, and improve their recovery. Um, and then those, those, um, supplements started to be more appealing to general population, people who are interested in anti-aging. Um, and then I started um, a blog in 2006 called Mark's Daily Apple. And that was the place I started writing about my ideas on diet and exercise and how they come together and how, how we should treat the average person uh, more like an athlete and train like an athlete and eat like an athlete. And even if you're an average citizen, you would, you would get the benefits that way. 
and that became books. Uh, Primal Blueprint came out in 2008. Uh, and then I was doing seminars and I started, so that was a source of income for me. And I was selling vitamins. I was doing very well. I mean, I could have, you know, retired on my vitamin sales, on my supplement sales. But in 2015, I, I just realized I, I was talking and writing about food all the time. And I was talking about the sauces and the dressings and the toppings and the things you put on good food to make it better for you and make it taste good and yeah. make it better for you. And then I, I thought there's no company making health, really healthy salad dressings or healthy mayonnaise or healthy ketchup or healthy pasta sauces. And so that's what started this company, Primal Kitchen, this idea. And so we shipped our first product in um, February of 2015. And before the end of 2018, three and a half years later, I had a, I had a great offer from Kraft Heinz to buy the company. So three and a half years from start to finish. But, you know, 40 years of working my ass off and 40 years of, of pivoting and making choices and learning from those choices. Yeah. And then 10 years of brand building, where I was writing, I was creating an audience for myself. I mean, this is before social media. I was building a platform with my blog, with Mark's Daily Apple. That's how you yeah. found out about me. So that by the time I launched my product, I had millions of followers. So it was, I won't say it was easy. It's never easy, but it was easier for me to launch my products with, with a, you know, a number of people who, who were willing to try what I was making. So it was like years of, uh, so of you improving and researching, yes. studying. And, and always investing in myself. Yeah. Always, always, always investing in myself. Whether it was more knowledge, whether it was coaching, whether it was seminars, whether it was just investing in a business that I was starting. Always, always, always investing in myself. And you mentioned a word that I like, pivoting. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think when, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, what took you to like level one didn't take you to level two, level three, like like let's say every every five years you were at like a new mark. Yeah. Uh, like what got you to your, was that your breakthrough uh, when you sold that company? That was like the most money you ever made yeah. when that happened? Yeah. So everybody looks at that, right? But they yeah. don't see all the other years. Like how many times did you have to pivot to get to that part? Oh yeah, place or how many sold? times you have a great idea that turns out not to be a great idea, but it, it leads to another idea that's even a better idea. Yeah. You know, and that's pivoting. So you might have a goal in mind, um, and then you you know it's great to have goals, and you set the goal, and you and you, but as you're going down that path toward the goal, you go, yeah, this isn't going to work the way I thought it was, or maybe that wasn't such a great idea. But all of a sudden, I see this over here. That's how I can take what I built thus far and now transition or pivot over to that, and and maybe change my goal a little bit or a lot. Yeah. Do you get most of your amazing ideas when you work out? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean. Um, when I'm like in the old days when I was running and I'd be, I'd be on a two hour run alone yeah. in the hills, I'd write entire books. Of course, I forget about it. By the time I got home, I forgot all the great, yeah, the best yeah. ideas I had, but, and then I'm out on a paddleboard. Now I have great ideas paddling. I, I, I like to do my, some of the long workouts alone. So paddling, I'll, I'll do it alone. Yeah. And great, get great ideas doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I get a lot of great ideas when I'm working out. I, I don't know if it's, I think that's one of the reasons why, why kind of like working yeah, out yeah. in the mornings because the, the blood flow is are, are you do you work out in the mornings too? no i mean no. what depends on what i call morning i'm useless before eight o'clock so um i mean in terms of physical activity yeah it just doesn't appeal to me um i get up 6 30 i read two papers i do the uh, you know the crosswords and all the puzzles in the new york times you know that's sort of my my method of getting the day started um and usually i usually work out around 9 30 between 9 30 and 10 30 i start my workout yeah yeah and it's, and it's, but you do work out every, like, do you work out every day? No, like so I do, but I do something. So like if I go to the gym, um, one day I might paddle the next day. I might ride my bike the next day. Um, I start taking tennis lessons. So I might do tennis the next day. I might, I might take, like, I took two days off, uh, in a row last week. Um, I was traveling and I didn't feel like working out and I have the luxury now to say, who cares? I don't really, I'm not going to detrain. I'm not going to lose my conditioning for not working out for two days. In fact, I convinced myself it was probably good for me to take two days off yeah. and recover. But those are like fun workouts. You don't even yeah. feel like you're working out because you're paddle right. bo uh, boarding and you like that. Yeah. Or I got a buddy I read, ride fat bikes with. And so we're right up the beach in Miami and, um, and in the sand in the deep sand. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, the view is great every day because of all of the yeah people in their 
bikinis and whatever. Yeah, I, I, I bet. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but but uh, well, Mark, thanks so much for all this information you gave us. We're gonna put all the links below. Cool. For all your products, the book. Um, if somebody wants to get started in into this into your diet and and get into it, how many days does it take for for them to be? So three weeks. So three, three uh, weeks. All I ask to begin with is is a three week commitment, and you'll see, you'll start to see results, and from there you'll rechoose and rechoose. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Mark. Well, appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, Thanks for pleasure, coming. Yeah. And I got so much. I think this is going to be, it's going to get a million views. Watch, ah, cool. watch awesome. it because it's so much information. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of my, uh, one of the podcasts that I've done where I learn the most. Oh, nice. Because it's, you can't have a, a healthy business without a healthy mind, a healthy body. I mean, that's, that's the, that's probably the take home message for the entrepreneur is you, you need, you know, if you, if you don't focus on health, then you can't focus on the health of your business. Yeah. You know? Wow. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, guys.